Today we'll be looking at this question from the 2014 HSE, so let us begin. Welcome to the first installment of Eureka Engineering HSE Solutions. The first question I'd like to look at is a question from the 2014 HSE paper, 22A Part I, where it says that we need to determine the magnitude and direction of the reaction at pin joint A. Now the first step is to draw the reaction forces. So step one, draw reaction forces. Now we see that A, A is a pin joint. So with pin joints there's a vertical force and a horizontal force. And at E, it's a roller joint. So there's only one force, which is the vertical force only. And we'll label this dy. This is a y. This is a x. This is my x axis, and this is my y axis. Now, the next step is to determine the moments. So we have to use the moments equation. So step two. Now with, some, now with the moments, moments is the force times the perpendicular distance. So for this question, I'm going to do sum moments about point A. By doing sum moments about point A, it gets rid of these two forces. Why? Because these two forces are going through the point. So the force that will generate a moment will be this force here and this force here, which means now we only have one unknown rather than the three. So, I know that this is the force, this is the perpendicular distance, so that will create a moment. Now I'm going to assume some of the moments. I'm going to assume the moment to be positive in the anti-clockwise direction. It's up to you what you assume it to be, it doesn't really matter, as long as you are consistent with your calculations. So this will create a moment about point A, so the force will create a moment around point A going in the clockwise direction. So it will be negative 20 times 4.33. And EY will create a moment around this direction, so anti-clockwise, so plus EY times the perpendicular distance, which I forgot to place, and that is 15 meters. So EY times 15 equals zero. Do the algebra and you get EY equals 5.77 kilonewtons. Now, once you've done the sum of moments, we now move on to the sum of forces in the vertical direction. So I'll consider some of, I'll consider the forces to be positive in the upwards direction. So sum of forces equals zero in the upward direction. Now, before we be, before we begin with this equation, we need to solve this force into its horizontal and vertical components. Now, by doing this, we need to utilize some angles. So, we know that this is 30 degrees. I'm going to create an imaginary horizontal line that is parallel to this line. So, I know that this is 30 degrees. Why? Because it's alternate, and this line is parallel to this line. Now, which means this will be 60 degrees, because it's a complementary angle. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So I'll break this up into its horizontal and its vertical components. This is a right angle. Now, this line is parallel to this line. So therefore, this angle will also be 60 degrees. The reason being alternate angles. And alternate angles are equal. So, when doing my sum forces in the vertical direction, I need to know what this is. So now, this is opposite and this is hypotenuse. So we're using the sine trig ratio. So... Or I'll do this here. So sine 60, the angle, equals opposite, which is, let's call that V, over the hypotenuse, which is 20. So vertical equals 20 sine 60. And that's going down, so I'm going to call this negative 20 sine 60. So I can now plug it into this equation here. So I've got negative 20 
sine 60 there's a vertical force here as well which is what we want plus a y and the vertical of e y which is what we already found previously which is 5.77 plus 5.77 equals 0 a y equals 20 sine 60 minus 5.7 and from memory a y equals 11.55 kilonewtons. Now, once we've done some forces, we now move on to some forces in the horizontal direction. So step four. So now I have to break this now, we've already broken this into its horizontal vertical, now I need to find its horizontal component. So, this is adjacent, and this is hypotenuse, so we'll be using cos. So, cos 60 equals adjacent, which is the horizontal, over the hypotenuse, which is 20, therefore h equals 20 cos 60. So plug it into the equation and we get AX, which is the horizontal force, plus the horizontal force here, which is 20 cos 60 equals 0, AX equals negative 10 kilonewtons. Now because it's negative, that means we assume it to be going in the wrong direction. So because it's negative, we flip it. So therefore, AX equals 10 kilonewtons going that way. And because this is positive, that means we've assumed correctly, and so that's just going upwards. Okay, now we ask for the reaction at pin joint A. With pin joint A, there's two forces. That means we need a, re a resultant force, so we need to use Pythagoras. So we draw up our vector, our vectors into its triangle. So there's its vertical, there's its horizontal, and there's its resultant. So I'll call this R. So R equals square root 10 squared plus 11.5 squared. R equals 15.28 kilonewtons. So that's just using simple Pythagoras. And yeah, that's correct. Now, with the direction, I need to find the angle. So this is the angle I'm after because it's under the horizontal. So we use tan, so tan, theta, equals opposite adjacent, so 11.5 over 10, therefore theta equals tan inverse 11.55 on 10, therefore theta equals um, 49 degrees. So, to conclude, our answers are Therefore, R equals 15.28 kilonewtons, and the direction is going this way at 49 degrees. And there's your solution for part A, part I.